Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Sheila Bela, and I'm coming to you with a review, another review of Tyler Perry Sisters. Yeah, I review Tyler Perry Sisters. I review um, Love and Marriage Huntsville, and I give updates on just different little news, current news, hip hop, popular culture. <laughs> so y'all check out all my other content, and please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Channel to my channel. I am a growing channel. And I would love for you to help me grow and flourish. Yes, I am Sheila Bila. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Y'all, it's late. I am cooking. Yes, I am. Um, Not much, but just enough for my family. Then I'm going everywhere else. Like my mama and them, my sister-in-law and them house. But, you know, I cook a little bit for my family. <laughs> Two. Anyway, we're going to get into this review. This is love. Oh Lord, this is um Tyler Perry's Sisters season five. I believe it's episode seven. Um, Ego Trip. Y'all, this episode picks up where it left off where they was having, I don't know if the well, I know it wasn't an intervention, but Mama Lisa called everybody over to Karen's house because Karen wrote these letters to Zach and to Aaron last episode. She um read her letter to Aaron talking about how much. Child, she love him, but she can't love him because she's Zach the messed up. And this is a continuation of that. But when they was about to get ready to start, they had a they had a a knock, knock, knock at the door. And Mama Lisa go open the door and it's hi. How who are you? I'm Fatima. Fatima. Zach, Fatima, what you doing here? <laughs> so Fatima walks in and she's like, um, hey, Aaron. Hey, Fatima. Karen, welcome to my home. I said, girl, you can't even say hi, huh? You real mad. Mmm. Well, well, you know what? Karen, you done popped up over her house. So rightly so, she can come over to yours. Because she was invited. Your mama invited her. Y'all just didn't know that she was going to show up. But she did. So, Fatima, she takes a seat and the inter... I would say intervention and the letter reading begins, but the mother, she, uh, mama Lisa, she get ready and she tells Fatima, I'm glad you decided to show up and, uh, <laughs> Fatima looking at Zach. So you going to give me a kiss. So they kiss each other and here go Karen. I know you didn't. Not in my house. Girl, yeah, they kissed in your house and you just sit there and watch. But anyway, so. Mama Lisa says, you know, the love of her life, which is Karen, and she would do anything for Karen. You know, do you have children for Tima? Karen, no, she don't. Yeah, dog, she asked for Tima, Karen. Shoot. And here go for Tima. Not yet. <laughs> okay. So, not yet, Karen. So, Karen just kind of, you know, face looking a little moldy. All right. So she says, Mama Lisa says, you know, she does anything for her children. She tries to make sure that, you know, her baby Karen is happy. And she called everybody together so Karen can read these letters. And Fatima's like, oh, yeah, I've heard about this. You know, you read the letters to make sure you get everything out. You write it down. Oh, you have? Yes, I think that's a good tactic. Yeah, I think it is, too. I mean, Mama Lisa says she heard it from Oprah. Here you go, um, Zach. You think that's good? Zach, just calm down. Now, Karen, she starts to read. Mama, I don't think I can do this. Baby, you can do it. It's going to be all right. So then she pulls out her paper, right? Then she starts saying that she remembers. She wonders why she don't like butterflies, right? So, oh, that's me, child. But she, <laughs> I had, yeah, anyway, don't look at that picture. But she was saying that she was trying to realize why she don't um like butterflies, right? So while she was talking about, <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh, but why was Zach and Fatima looking at this girl like this the whole time she was reading them letters to the point that Karen said, "Why are you looking at me? <laughs> why are you looking at me like that, Fatima?" She was like, "Girl, what? I'm just trying to figure out what you got going on." But anyway, I done jumped ahead. So. Oh, Karen is like, yeah, I don't like butterflies. And then that brings me back to the day that we met because they was on the train and there was a butterfly on the train. And Zach got up and ran like a witch with the bee, the bee witch. And um, 
he was running and everybody was laughing at him. And all of a sudden, he fell on Karen because he was running from a butterfly. Yeah, she said because she never got the chance to enjoy the beauty of a butterfly because every time she see one, it reminds her of that. I said, well, get down. But you know what? That butterfly used to be a, a caterpillar and that caterpillar got into that cocoon and then it came out. So, I mean, when you met Zach, maybe he was a caterpillar and now he's a flourishing butterfly <laughs> and you mad. But it's okay. It's okay. You may or may not have his baby. So she starts talking. She says, and now I've spent three years of my life wondering why I cannot, what she say? Wondering why I cannot be in a healthy relationship. This man over here, she pointed at Aaron, try to love me and I can't love him and be happy. I don't know what a good relationship is. You done cheated on me with, with, with you done cheated on me with strippers. You done cheated on me with coworkers. Jack, 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 you done cheated on her with some of everybody. I gave you my time. I gave you my money. And, and and all I got was was nothing in return. Child, she was going out. And Zach was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I gave your money back. I gave you back $75. Jesus. I gave you back $75,000. She said that wasn't enough. Make it enough. That's in my smoky mama voice. But anyway, she said that wasn't enough. And while he's getting heated, Zach is, here go Fatima. Calm down. Look at me. Just look at me because Fatima said, you know, she want to have something to say. Now, I skipped that part. This was happening before they started. Fatima said she had something to say. But the mama was like, you'll be able to say what you need to say later. You know, Fatima was holding it. She was holding it. And Aaron over there looking like, man, man, you know. So the mama said, you know, she's almost finished, Zach. She's almost finished. You're going to have your time to say what she's going to say. Because Zach was going out. He said, I been going through this with a lot with women you know he was talking about his mama and all of this stuff right and and then he got with women that treated him the same way that karen did he said did it didn't make me feel good that i couldn't take care of you the way i wanted to i kind of felt bad for that i was like dang karen i know he dogged you out and stuff but then for him to admit that he wanted to do better for you he wanted to be a better man for for you but he just couldn't because of the way that you kind of put him down all the time. He kind of felt like every time you tried, he tried, you put him down. And it just gave him remnants of what his mama and every other woman up until this point of Fatima did to him in his life. But anyway, so she gets to reading her letter. She gets to finishing. And she was just saying she wanted to be over him, but she still loves him. But now she got this baby and now they're going to be together for a long time. You know, it may or may not be his, but now she got to deal with the fact that she got this baby and he ain't really going to be going nowhere. And she said, that's all I got to say. Child, she done balled up this paper and just threw it over there on the floor. I said, who going to pick that paper up? You know you, you know you real man when you when you throwing trash on your own flow. Child. Anyway, so here you go. Do you have anything to say, Zach? That's what Mama Lisa said. Zach said, "Nope, I don't have nothing to say." I said, "Zach, you know you got something to say because I can see it all in your face. It's written all over your face." Okay, so here you go, Aaron. I got something to say. You know what? I'm sorry for what for what Zach did to you. Boy, here goes Zach. Don't you start with me. What about you? What about you? You not a better man than me. You had your whole wife shoot herself in the head in front of Karen. You know, talking about you ain't innocent. Here go Karen trying to defend Aaron now. We not talking about that right now. But Karen, Aaron did put you through a lot to where you didn't even want to talk to him no more. Aaron had to worm his way back into your life by talking bad about pretty much Zach. So anyway, Karen didn't want to hear all of that. So Aaron goes on to say that he is trying. He want to be the better man for um, Karen. He wants to be able to love her. And he also says, um, he also, 
He also says, and I know that you still love Zach. I understand that. I needed to hear that. But because I heard all of this, that doesn't stop me from loving you. I said, child, just go kick Aaron in the face and he's still going to love you. It's okay. So, um, Zach is like, can I go now? Can I go now? Like, really? No, no, no. Because Fatima said, I still got something to say. So, Fatima is there and Karen don't want to hear what Fatima got to say. Because at first, earlier, she said, yeah, mama, I want to hear what she got to say. But now when she want to say something, <laughs> Karen don't want to hear it. So the mama is just like, no, no, go ahead and talk. Go ahead and talk, you know. So Fatima says, Karen, first and foremost, I want you to know that I'm not going to do anything to harm your child. I will, well, if, if, but she got to put that if is Zach, baby. I won't hurt your child. I will welcome that baby with open arms. But we got to get a few things straight. You cannot be popping up over to my house when you think you want to. The mama like, girl, you been popping up over this girl's house. Mama, don't, that's in the past. Don't be bringing it up. <laughs> she didn't say that, but, you know. And then she said, when she said, so now we got to talk about you calling me a bee witch. You call her a bee witch. Mama, that, we ain't got to talk about that right now. Now, <laughs> All right. Anyway, she said, because when black people call each other the N word, I'm going to say ninjas, when they call each other ninjas, you know, it's cool. I guess it's the culture. But then when a white person called a black person the ninja, then it's a problem. But then I got my friends, right? And my friends, they call, we call each other to be witches. You know, you to be witch, I'm to be witch. We ought to be witches because we, we friends. That's what friends do. But you ain't my friend. And you not finna call me to be witch because that means it is war. The mama says, so you is really doing this? Mama, listen, I did it. But that's beside the point. I'm pregnant. I'm stressed out. You need to get out of my house. <laughs> Karen said, uh, um, Fatima said, I'd gladly get up out of your house. But Karen, but then Mama Lisa say, but Karen, baby, right is right and wrong is wrong. You supposed to be on my side, mama. But right is right and wrong is wrong. And I'm on the side of right. You can't be doing this. Child, Karen get up and said she's stressed out. And she done went pregnant. <laughs> and she want everybody to get up out of her house. She gets up and she leaves the room. So that leaves these four here. And Fatima, being the nice person that she is, she says, Mama Lisa, I'm glad um, you put this together, but I don't even know if this worked. The mama said, yeah, it's going to work. I know my daughter. Ah, okay, well, you know, mama knows best. And uh, Fatima, um, Fatima said, well, it was nice to meet you. It was nice. And, um, Thank you. And pretty much, <laughs> you have a great night. And that was the end of that episode. Well, that, that, that segment. Well, that scene. All right. So now you down here at the bar. And you got Hayden and um, Gary. I said, I ain't never seen Hayden talk so much in this last part since this break that came back from Tyler Perry's. Sisters, I said, why is Hayden getting so much camera time? It's very annoying. I'm really sick of him talking because he talk about the same stuff. As soon as this freaking scene open, he tell me, yeah, you know, I try to keep Fatima off of me. I'm like, when? Oh, am I looking at a different show? When was you trying to keep Fatima off of you? Last I know. You was on the top of Fatima car getting drugged around and getting beat up. Now, who's trying to keep who on top of what? Anyway, so Gary is just looking at him like, boy, the lies you tell. You know, you and Fatima on two different levels. What you trying to say, Gary? What you trying to say? See, you think, you know, what'd he say? See, you you got, you know, Colin said he got a smart mouth. He said, well, you know what? I'm not trying to be funny. Right. Oh, that was when he they start bringing up Robin, talking about Robin is in leverage up to his neck, and 
Gary be begins to say that uh, Robin is a smart man. And then Hayden said, well, shoot, I'm smart too. He said, well, I mean, I'm smart. That's what Gary said. I'm smart. I don't know about you. And then that's when Hayden was just like, you know, you got an old slick mouth. He said, well, you know, I'm just playing. Because Hayden had to throw up the fact that he's a lawyer. But Gary is right. Robin is very, very smart. And don't underestimate him. And Gary said he looked at his credentials and he know a lot of people. And I'm pretty sure he done did a lot of favors. And the people that he know do favors, just like Hayden and Gary, y'all using each other to do favors. His people do the same thing, right? So then, you know, Gary said, you know, we gonna have to be, you know, watch out because Hayden think that everything is in the bag. He think that everything cool. And now he look at Hayden looking at Gary like, well, what's going on with you and Andy? You know, at first you was into it. You went from suing her to now you not suing her no more. And you run around here skinning and grinning, you know. And so Gary is just like, I mean, it is what it is. Andy like me. Me and Andy got some sweet, some good going on. What is it? Me and Mrs. Me and Mrs. Jones, they got a thing going on. That's Andy and Gary. They got a thing going on. And Hayden is just like, yeah, right. She know what she she know what she doing. You know, she says that Hayden says that Gary, no, Hayden is saying that Andy is playing with Gary, and Gary don't got it the way that Gary thinks he got it. And Gary said, yeah, I got it. I mean, me and Andy, we good. We I, we so good. I was good with her last night. That's how good we are. And then Hayden proceeds to say, so you can't call her right now and go over there. Like some little kids. I bet you can't. <laughs> he said, I bet I can. All right. Well, bet 10,000 shares. He said, man, I ain't bet no 10,000 shares. He said, and then, um. Hayden is like, oh, because you nervous. You know she's not going to pick up that phone. And if she do pick up that phone, you know she's not going to want you to come over. He said, well, okay, Gary says, I'll bet 30,000 shares. And um, he was like, man, that's ludicrous. I'm not betting that much money. He said, thank you, because what you're saying is ludicrous too. That's too much. And then Gary says, well, I bet you three shares. They said, okay, that sounds right. That's amicable. We can do that. So they agreed upon three shares that if Gary calls Andy, Andy will pick up the phone and Andy will say that it's okay for Gary to come home. So Gary picks up the phone. Ring, 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 ring. Andy is, um, you know, working late at night,�����������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������
y'all, I don't know why I thought that there was an earring in cute nose. I when I realized <laughs> that was cocaine, I guess that's cocaine on the side of his nose. But he said he was smoke smoking up the TV. Where the TV at? I smoked up the TV, Daddy. I guess that was from a movie. Where the where the where the microwave? Where my golf clubs? You know, he looking around the house. I smoked up the golf clubs for seventy five dollars. So Q Q over there smoking up everything in the house. Calvin acting like he don't know what to do. Talking about you on house arrest. You can't be high. I'm like, but why can't you just call the regular police? Why is there a particular person that he has to call? And I know that Calvin's name is not on the lease, but he can say that he is house sitting for his friend. I mean, he can make up any excuse. He don't have to say he lived there, but he, I thought he could call the police because this boy is on probation with the ankle monitor on. Only thing they got to do is drug test him and he go back to jail. So I didn't know that he had to call a particular person. Did y'all know that? I didn't know that. Because if he goes outside of the vicinity, then his ankle monitor will come off and won't random police come up? So why random police can't come to his house? I don't know. I'm confused. And Q over there talking about he done smoked up everything. He done took the locks off of Calvin, though. Calvin mad. Tell me, you can't keep no locks off. I'm a gangster, something he said. Calvin get mad. Go in his room and shut the door. That's pretty much what that is. So, back over at um, Fatima and uh, Zach's house, they laying in the bed. They're discussing what is what went on tonight, that night, tonight. And Zach says, I thought you weren't going to show up. She said, well, I wasn't going to show up, but, you know, I talk, I, I was convinced that I should go. Zach said, so who convinced you, your gangster cousin? And Fatima said, yeah, you know, she said that I should hear her side of the story. I should hear her truth. But for some reason in Zach's mind, he feels like because Fatima heard everything that Karen said, then that would sway the way that Fatima feels about him. But the thing about it is, but the thing about it is, she just wanted to hear her side because she wanted to, she want. I mean, she just, she's a woman and she wanted to hear Karen's truth at the end of the day, because I forgot to mention when they were at Karen's house, um, Zach kept saying that he wanted to leave and Fatima said, no, nah, we're not going to go. He said, you just want to hear. She said, right. I do. I want to hear. And I want you to listen. I guess something like that. But anyway, they're back at the house. But she said, that's not going to change how I feel about you. But she said she understood where Karen was coming from. And then he was like, why? I don't understand. She gave him a few analogies. One about the chain breakers, about him investing and it didn't go through. Right. He, I guess he didn't understand that one. Then he brought up another one. She brought up another one about, um, Something, but anyway, the last one she brought was about the slot machine. You at the slot machine, you, you've been there, you've been there for days, weeks, months, years at this same slot machine, and you never win. But then, as soon as uh, you get up from that machine, somebody sits in that seat and then they hit. And then you like all that time, effort, and money that I put into you, I don't reap any of the benefits. And that's what Fatima was trying to get. Zach to understand because Zach was like, well, I gave her her money back. You know, I tried to make it right, but she said it wasn't about the money. It was about the, about the investment. So he was saying, so this relationship is an investment. She was like, yeah, I invest into you and you invest into me. And he was like, what money? She said, I mean, money could be an investment too. You know what I'm saying? Cause you've been with a broke man for a long time and finally he get his get right, right. You know? Couple dollars start flowing into the house. Yes, you want to reap the benefit, the benefits of that. 
instead of you investing all this time, all this money into a broke <laughs> a broke man, then he voila hit the jackpot, and you done left, and then somebody else then came in, got your house. Got your car, got your clothes, got your kids, <laughs> you know. But I guess that's another reason why Karen wants to hold on to the fact that she thinks that that may be Zach's baby because she finally get to get something from Zach that she can reap a benefit from, you know. So, I mean, you know, Fatima says she get it. So they kind of talked about it, and then they, you know, finally, Zach understood, and then he looked at Fatima, talking about, you know what you're doing, you got all that makeup on, you know you didn't want to go to sleep, you know you wanted to get it in. Child, I'm not a makeup person, I'm not. I don't want to be making out with my man, and he got <laughs> he got on more lipstick than me, because I done kissed him all, my lipstick off on his face, you know, anyway, but some people do, that it is what it is. So now Karen is back at the house. Everybody is gone and her mom is there. Her mom comes into her room and they talk about the night. And Karen said that she's still really hurt. She don't she feels pretty much worse <laughs> than how she felt before that night even happened. And the mom was like, "You know what? You're going to feel better. You just had to release. These are the stages to go through." You know, sometimes you have to open up and release and empty out your cup so you can fill up your cup with a lot of the good things, you know, love, joy, peace, and all these other things. And the mama is saying, it's okay. I've been there. I understand because she was went through a bad relationship and she had to release a lot of that stuff so she can, you know, I guess reap all the good benefits of life, love, happiness, joy, and be able to, to pour that stuff into her daughter, all the love and the peace and the comfort, you know, be there for her in a positive way. And so Karen was just like, yeah, you know, and then they bring up Fatima. The mama said, you know, but you you was right about Fatima. She really ain't that bad. And um, Karen said, I know. And that makes it, you know, worse. I wish she could be a bewitch, but she not. And then her mom was like, yeah, I can't believe you was calling her that. You know you owe that girl an apology. And that was one more thing I wanted to say about Karen in that um, in the earlier scene. I just wanted her to pull her wig up a little bit on her forehead. That's neither here nor there. I just wanted her to push it up some. But anyway, so she was just saying, well, yeah, you know, that's why it will make, Karen said it'll make her not like Fatina, Fatima more because, I mean, she, she she a cool person. And then <laughs> Karen asked her mama, you know, mama, I just want to know if I can go to the shop. Her mama said, no, you on bed rest. You can't be going up there. And then Karen said, mama, I'm grown. Girl, you ain't grown. You are not grown. Because the way you handling these situations with these men and with this woman, you ain't grown. You still need, need me to tell you what to do. She said, well, mama, can I go for at least 30 minutes? She said, okay, we'll see. You know, we'll see. And then the mama brings up the accountant, which is Erin. And she said, huh? She just was like, you know, kind of head scratching. Saying, you know, he kind of seemed too good to be true. You know, Karen perks up. To be true, right, mama? I know, I know. That's what you see what I see now. You know, and the mama said, I'm just trying to wait to see what he's hiding. And then Karen just like, yeah, I've been waiting for a long time. And he hasn't broke yet. And so the mom is just like, well, you know what? You know, maybe this is what it is. Maybe all of this, all this whole situation is leading up to whatever this is right now. So I really don't, I really didn't understand what that mean. I mean, if y'all did help me out, because whatever that moment is led to this, I don't know, but they came to the conclusion that she can go to the shop for 30 minutes. And Aaron may or may not be good. I don't know. Maybe he's more good than bad. I don't really know. So, wow, child. <laughs> I guess a lot of these scenes had me like, child. Danny is in her home. She's in her bed. And contender number five, which is Jonah, 
Thank y'all for helping me out in the comments because I didn't know what that man's name was. And I actually, <laughs> before I even reviewed this, I still didn't know what his name was. I had to go back to um, my last episode that I reviewed, look at the comments, and I said, okay, it's Jonah. Child. He all on top of her. Girl, ooh, child. I'm going to make you feel it. I'm going to make you feel it. She like, feel what? <laughs> what is going on here? Child, he trying to bump and grind. Karen don't know what's going on. She don't know if he up or down, in or out, over or under. Child, because she said she can't feel nothing. <laughs> so she talking about her phone ringing. My phone ringing. He said, I don't hear no phone ringing. It's ringing. It's ringing. I got to go in the other room and get the phone. So she get up out of her bed. She go and call Aaron. Excuse me, Andy. Andy, she's still on the floor when she working. She like, hey, Andy, what you doing? And he said, girl, I thought you had company. Child, I got some company. But the thing about it is, see, Sabrina in jail. So she can't call Sabrina like she used to to talk about you know, her physical escapades with the random men that she meet in the airport. So she got to call Andy. But Andy, you know, she's still in her thruffle, her entanglement. But anyway, back to Danny. So Danny said, you know, Andy, I thought she was, you know, she was like, yeah, but girl. who he wore itty, bitty, teeny, weeny, yellow, polka, dobby, keeny. <laughs> it is so small. It is teeny weeny. <laughs> it's a bitty spider. <laughs> Could not go up the water spell. <laughs> anyway, stop it, Sheila. Stop it. All right. Child, she dragging this man to to uh to Andy talking about child the thing. It, 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 the thing one thing. You know. And she was like, where did you meet him? At the airport. Red flag. Why? Okay, tell him to go home. Tell him to go home. Okay, Andy says, you need to call Preston. I don't, what is it, Andy? Oh, excuse me, what is it, Danny? You don't want to be lonely? What is it? Danny said, I can't call Preston. I mean, I do miss him. I mean, I want to call him. What I'm going to call and say, Andy? I don't want you to go marry Mindy that was around there at the merry-go-round. What you want me to say, Andy? Girl, just call Preston and tell him how you feel. Please. You over here picking up strays. Just do what you need to do. You know what? Knock, 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 knock. She had to knock her head, though. It was Gary. I got to go. Gary here. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> so, Gary opens up the door. He happy. He is happy. Now, his thing is thinking. She said, ooh. So you're horny right now. Yes. You you drunk? I'm just, I'm, you know, a little tipsy, but I'm happy to see you. I'm glad I get to see you. And then Andy raises the question, what's different now? Because I was thinking the same thing. Like at first you at first you had this real big problem with Andy. And you couldn't, you know, you you couldn't get your thing to thing. But now all of a sudden you can get your thing to thing. So, what's the problem? You know, what what changed? And he said, well, it was nothing. I just had to get over it. You know, he said, I just forgot about it. You know, I just want to be with you tonight. I want to have a good night. Well, don't keep me up all night. You know, I got to get up early in the morning. And so, he wants to get started. She was like, no, just go take a shower. Go take a shower. I guess she want him to, you know, wash some of that, that day off and wash a little bit of that, that drunkenness off. So he said, okay, okay, I'm finna go in here and I'm finna go ahead and take my, my shower. So while he's going to take the shower, she's just laughing, you know, because she's like, oh, I'm finna have a good night tonight. My man, he ready for me, you know. So she picks up his jacket and she sees these papers. And she's like, what are these papers? Child, they trying to get Robin. They trying to take Robin's company. So... Andy is like, I can't believe they're going to try to do this. Are you serious? So, you know, she kind of go over the papers real quick. She's skimming everything. And then she puts it in his pocket. I wonder what she's going to do with this information. Because she ain't supposed to be talking to Robin because she's boycotting him right now. But, man. Hmm. I don't know. 
We gonna find out. This is an interesting little storyline. Some good other than this picking up random strays and you got Q in the house that won't never leave with a nose ring of coke on his nose. But anyway, so this is the reason Danny, I was, so, you know what? I think I was more mad at this situation because I've said over and over again, Danny, quit inviting people to your home. I have no idea why she does this? Yes, Andy. Excuse me, Danny. Danny, she 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 not a she not a teeny weeny girl. You know what I'm saying? And she's not the one to hold her tongue. You know, she gives Medea tease like I don't play. I cut you. I shoot you. Whatever, whatever. But Danny, everybody ain't gonna back down to you when you get to talking your mess. So. Then he goes back into the room. Contender number five, he wants to finish the session that they started. But Danny, she just was like, at first she was trying to be nice. She was like, well, you know, I don't think this is good. You know, I, I kind of, I'm not feeling it anymore. And he was like, what you mean? She said, well, I kind of want you to go home, right? So he gets up, he seems like he's still drunk and he calls her a bee witch, right? And she was like, what? What you mean? She was, he was like, you give me all hot and bothered, and now you want to kick me out of your house. And so Danny was trying to contain herself because she didn't want to go off on the, hand, the handle as she normally do. But as he wants to sit up and call her a bee-witch and all these women are the same, like he really down there hanging and swinging, you know, she just was like, you know what? She did her hands like, I'm trying to contain myself, but he is making me blow. And in my mind, I was like, Danny, don't say nothing. Because <laughs> you don't know this man from Adam, Eve, nobody. Don't say nothing. That's what I was trying to tell her through the TV, but she couldn't hear me. I don't know why she wasn't listening. But anyway, she gets, the, and then she talking about this man's manhood now what drunk man you talking about his manhood talking about he need to get the little bitty um because he, he couldn't get a condom so he had to get the little bitty balloon animals that the little kids used to make little puppets and all of that talking about you know he he the clitoris it ain't the clit child a bunch of stuff it ain't it's a c she just really putting the man's manhood down you know so you can see that <laughs> I can tell, you know, I grew up with a bunch of boys. I grew up with a bunch of boys, my daddy, everybody. And I can tell when I'm rubbing my brothers the wrong way. Cause I, they face start to change. <laughs> and I know right then, even with my husband, if I'm just really just, you know, trying to we go at it a little bit. When I see his demeanor kind of change, I say, well, I think he's getting a little bit too mad. Maybe you need to calm down. <laughs> so I'll just be like, you know, I just try to change my wording because, you know, you don't want nothing to escalate. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be mad the next 15 minutes. You know, you have little arguments and spats, but you don't want it to carry over. So you just try to diffuse the situation and calm it down. But then he didn't diffuse nothing. She saw that this man's demeanor was changing. That man started looking like something was rising in his body. And I said, Danny, you better learn. You, you need to bob and weave. I said, Danny, you ain't got no knife, no nothing. You ain't got nothing besides your counter on your, on your nightstand. This man is looking at you. He turned his whole body. And before Danny could get that next word out, this sucker popped. And the only thing Danny saw was black. And then them words came across the screen. This is, we don't condone violence. <laughs> I said, I don't either. And I'm not saying that this is Danny's fault. By no means necessary. And no man shouldn't hit no woman. Because no means necessary. But the thing is, Danny, you don't know that man from a can of paint. You don't know his actions. You don't know nothing. And to, I believe this is a lesson learned. Quit inviting 
random men in your house that you don't know. And and you don't know them, don't talk about their manhood. Try to diffuse the situation as best you can. Now, it have been different. And then it was just like, yeah, you know, I'm tired. You know, because I thought the situation was going to go different, like way, way different. You know, you know, she would have been like, I'm tired. I want to go, whatever, whatever. And then he popped in the face. But she was, you know, she was, I ain't, she don't deserve it. But sometimes you got to learn women. <laughs> you just, everybody, everybody don't take the stuff the way, you know, some people don't take stuff like that. And that was scary because that man could have went off, hit her and just kept welling on her. But hopefully it was just that one time. I don't know. But I don't know. Anyway, y'all, this is Sheila Bila. And um, tell me what you think about this episode. Tell me what you think about Danny. I mean, I don't know. Quit just inviting the man to your house. Dang, this was a long review. I did not mean, mean, to, mean to do this this long. But anyway, this is Sheila Bila. Y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all have a great day. Bye.